In Rags to Riches, you will learn God's definition of true prosperity, how to apply and activate God's laws, God's required foundation for prosperity, and how to receive from God. Order your book of Rags to Riches for only $10. Join Tom Letty every Tuesday at 12 p.m. at the Wyndham Hotel on 41st and Garnett in Tulsa, Oklahoma for special meetings with God You Will Succeed. Tom will share valuable information on how to get out of debt and be successful in life. It's free and everyone is welcome. Welcome to With God You Will Succeed. Psalms 127 1 says, Unless the Lord build a house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stands guard in vain. My guest today is Robin Brenner. Robin, welcome to the program. Thank you. Robin has written uh, several books, but uh, she's got one here today we want to talk about The Joy of Kingdom Living. Yep. Yeah. Kingdom so, Driven Living. Because you've got to be driven to walk in the kingdom. Amen, amen. Well, tell us a little bit about it, Robin. Well, this book is basically about how the kingdom of God is in you. And so the the king is enthroned in you. You carry the presence of God wherever you go. And the kingdom is in power. And there's so much that we can do, so much that God wants us to do in, in the area of the supernatural realm, in the area of multiplying the loaves and the fishes, Mm -hmm. healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead, um, being filled with his presence and power that you're not walking in. Yeah. Now, there's a workbook that goes with that, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, we might show the people here the workbook. Uh, Looks like there is quite a bit of work that goes with it. (laughs) But, well, actually, uh, it's a Bible study yeah. that goes mm-hmm. with it. And, yeah. and, and this can be used um, as uh, self-study or uh, with a group. And right now, I'm working at getting him in, into the prisons because, you know, once you know who you are in Christ and what he's done, you can walk in that power. You can change those prisons. You can change those people. And I'm hoping to get that into the far back countries that, right. you know, that that. Know the supernatural, but not the supernatural power right. of God. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's one thing to know the Word of God, but it's another thing to be able to put it in practice. Right. A lot of people know it, the, the Word of God, but uh, they don't know how to put it into practice. Right. It's just like everybody knows who Jesus is, but a lot of people don't know Him. Right, right. So, you know. Yeah, and, you know, you think of it with Christians, too. A lot of us think that uh, being a Christian is going to church and being good. Right. But, you know, it's about a supernatural relationship with a supernatural daddy. Oh, amen. And, amen. and once you, and, and he, he is supernatural. Everything about our daddy is, is supernatural. Right. And it, it's experiencing him. It's experiencing what's in the Bible is what we should be living today. Right. We should be living an Acts life. We should, yeah. we should see these everyday uh, supernatural things happening in our life today. Oh, Mark Just, 9, 23 says, if thou canst believe. All things, things are, are possible. possible to him that believeth. And you, if you believe that, right. and when you pray, God's going to hear and answer your prayer. As long as you don't break the laws of man or the laws of God. I believe you can have whatever you ask for. A lot right. of people say, well, if it's God's will. I right. always say, as long as it doesn't break the laws of man or the right. laws of God, it's right. God's will and plan and purpose for you to be a success in life. And you know, um, his, his will was done 2,000 years ago. And mm-hmm. In, in the matter of healing or uh, prosperity, that's already given to us. Right. It's part of the kingdom, right. and we have to take it. Yeah. We have to. T- the de- God's not keeping it from us. No, it's the devil. He's keeping us from mm-hmm. it, and we have to take what's been given to us. I like, yeah, I like to tell about the woman with the issue of blood. You know, I mean, uh, Jesus when he started his days, he didn't have uh, a goal and plan. What is he going to do? Said he went about seeking you know, to save the lost. But uh, this uh, lady with the issue of blood, she just knew that if she could get to Jesus, that she would be healed. Well, everybody was trying to keep her from it, you know. But it gets back to, if we go to him and we have the faith, we're going to get what we're believing God for. Right. And he, had, he didn't even know she was in the crowd. He just said, he asked, who touched me? because he knew the healing virtue 
had gone out of him. Right. Well, same way with uh, the blind beggar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he knew that if he could get to Jesus, but Jesus never touched either one right. of those. I mean, so if you got a need and you right. got the faith right. and you plant a seed, you're going to get that you know, harvest. You know what I think some of the problem is, though? I think that <clears throat> most of us, most Christians are afraid to dream. Most Christians are afraid to be prosperous or to believe, well, is God so good that he wants to heal me of this? Or they're afraid that they're going to uh, step out of bounds with God. Yeah. Where the Bible says that he'll give you the desires of your heart. Well, right. sometimes we're afraid. We don't really know what our desires are because yeah. they're buried so deep in us because right. we're afraid we'll offend God or step on religious toes or something. Well, tradition keeps people from receiving it, their yeah, blessings more than anything. Binds them up in every way possible. Right. And, uh, you know, I was uh, taught, uh, thank God it didn't stick, uh, that the poorer you were, the less you had, the more spiritual you'd right. be, you know. Oh. Nothing but tradition couldn't be any right. further than from the truth, you know. Well, if you think about it, if he's the king of kings, we're the kings. Right. Well, kings are defined by the territory, the, the, the territory that they have, right. the dominion that they have. And uh, so, silver, gold mines, property, land, um, cattle, everything. I mean, we don't have to be rich because being rich is fun, but it's like heaven on earth. Right. On, is there poverty uh, in heaven? No. Well, God, you know, regardless of what people think, God really does want you to be uh, wealthy. Because and enjoy it. How are we going to get the message out right. without the finances? Now, the gospel is cheap, but believe me, it costs a lot of money to get it out there. Well, even if you look at Hollywood, um, if you compare uh, Christian movies mm-hmm. to Hollywood movies, we have to... We are the king's kids. Everything we should do should be with excellence, should be better than what the world has to offer. Why else would they want to come to us unless we have something they want, something Mm -hmm. better? And so being prosperous is part of heaven on earth, is part of our inheritance, Mm -hmm. you know, part of what God has given us. And and the more prosperous we are, the more we can give. And you cannot give God, you always get back. Oh, the more prosperous you are, the yeah. more you give, the more you get, the more you give, the more you sow. There's always needs out there. Yeah. Well, when God created the garden, Adam and Eve, he gave us authority over everything on the face of the right. earth. There's nothing on the face of the earth we don't have authority over. And he backs that up at Luke 10, 19. I've given you authority over everything on the face of the earth. That's so right. why don't we use that? Because that. we don't know... What we, it is. Right. Hosea 4 and 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Even even if you take like the weather, um, we have authority over the weather. Jesus demonstrated that. Right. Um, I believe that the, the church is in charge of the world because right. God gave men dominion and God's in charge of the church. Amen. But when the church doesn't step up and talk to the tornadoes, doesn't talk, I talk, go outside and talk to them, get right. out there, you're not allowed here. Right. But when the church doesn't know who they are in Christ, when they mm-hmm. don't stand up, in that power and dominion, then the world's problems are our problems. Right. Because we should be prosperous, we should know who we are in Christ, and we should stand up to everything that Jesus already accomplished on the cross. If if he's accomplished it on the cross, then we need to go and enforce it. That's right. part of the kingdom. Right. The kingdom dominion. You take authority, you see sickness, you go lay hands on them and you get them healed. Yeah. You what believe them healed. You see a tornado? Over serpents, scorpions, right. everything. On the face of the earth. You see a tornado? You, 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 you talk mm-hmm. to it, you need right. uh, finances, you you talk to it, you call it in, you sow seeds. It's words are seeds, yeah. God's mm-hmm. words, seeds, right. finances. Well, seeds. that book, uh, The Joy of Kingdom Living and Driven, <laughs> uh, what uh, caused you to write that book? I mean, well, I started, first of all, I got desperate. Yeah. I got hungry and I spent times uh, praying in the spirit in my prayer closet when my children were little and I would uh, uh, go and and minister. I'm also a clown ventriloquist and I would go mm-hmm. and minister in churches and I would hear these objections. God wants me sick. He's teaching me. He's giving me glory. Mm-hmm. And I get frustrated. So I go home and study in the word and I 
would put together little booklets mm -hmm. to give out free that would teach them about healing and so on. Yeah. But then I found a scripture that said, it's been given to me to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. And I started confessing that scripture, uh, meditating on it, thinking about it, and just speaking to God on it. And he, I'd go for a walk and he'd just give me a little more information and he'd pull the revelation together. And so uh, it began each of my, I think I have like six or seven, and I'm working on more books on the kingdom because it's been given for us to know. Right. And, and so I just started confessing that scripture. The more I confess it and I still confess it, the more revelation I get on it, the oh, more. Amen. It's just so exciting. In Matthew 21, 22, <laughs> whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. And boy, no ifs, ands, and buts about it. Learning about the kingdom, I mean the kingdom it's all wrapped up in, in, in the kingdom. Oh, we're you know? entitled to so much that Christians don't even know about. It's uh, the more every day I pick up the Bible, I see something that I've never saw before. And oh, it's yeah. such a blessing to get into the Word of God. This morning, I was supposed to read two chapters in First Samuel. I ended up reading about six yeah. because <laughs> I kind of broke away, you know. I do the five o'clock club. You get up every morning at five o'clock. You read two chapters in the Old Testament, five in Psalms, one in Proverbs, and two in the New Testament. Every now and then, though, you get caught up in the Word. I have and such a hard time doing more, that. You know, because I end up I'm a, I'm a, a Word person in the sense like I get the word Kingdom, mm -hmm. so I would try to do something like that and. I'm all over. God's putting all these scriptures. Right. In fact, I, I get almost in trouble because during praise and worship, God's talking to me. I carry a notebook everywhere, mm -hmm. and everyone's praising and worshiping, and I'm taking notes. Oh, really, God? That's really cool. Yeah. Pastor's talking. You know, yeah. but the Word, you know, Christians think, oh, God, I have to study the Word. Yeah. It's no, oh. no, you get to study the, the Word. This you, thing is so exciting. The oh. more you get into it, the, the more, more you, you want it. it. Yeah, yeah, I have a hard time yeah. following a, a structure yeah. because I go all over the place and yeah. I can go for hours because yeah. it's so yeah. alive. Right. You know, mm -hmm. fun. Right. We'll be back right after this message. Break free from the bondage of debt. Order Tom Letty's Financial Freedom Starter Kit today for just $60. Inside you'll find Tom's best-selling books and CDs, Rags to Riches, Your Greatest Asset, and Prosperity is Your Inheritance, plus so much more. Call 800-880-8220 or check out our website, TomLetty.com. Order today. You'll get all the materials you need to start on the road to financial freedom. Order the Dynamic Laws of Creative Selling by best-selling author Tom Letty. Inside, you'll find the answers that took Tom from rags to riches in the sales world. Call 800-880-8220 or check out our website, TomLetty.com today. In the making of a king, Tom Letty details nearly 40 things you must have, do, be, or achieve to become a king in your chosen field and will enable you to get a good thing going and keep it going. Order your copy of The Making of a King for only $15. Welcome back. I've been visiting with my good friend Robin Brimmer. Uh, Robin, uh, we've been talking about the goodness of God and, and how we need to know the Word of God. You know, Proverbs 4, 7, and 8 says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom with all thy giving, get understanding. Embrace her and she'll honor you. Uh, she'll promote you. Everything is right there in the Word of God. And you've written that book, The Joy of Kingdom Driven Living. So you, driven kind of wants to. Right. You have, uh, you were telling us what uh, drove you to write that book. There's, um, con I was, uh, you know, doing, continuing to do my confessions and uh, that one about the mystery of the kingdom of heaven, God just opened up the door for, for that and the more mm -hmm. that I began to uh, confess and study, uh, just like the word says, mm -hmm. you, you can have what you say. Right. And the word of God is alive. And the more I began to do that, the more revelation I got on that and just kept putting it together and putting it together. And God said, write the book. It's time. It's time to, to get it done. Mm -hmm. the, the kingdom the kingdom is everything to us. The kingdom is God's power. Yeah. You know, nearly yeah. everybody you talk to is going to write a book. Uh, and probably for 35 years, I was going to write a book, and, and I would throw notes in a, a folder, you know, <laughs> and really never thinking that I would get around to writing a book, and, and uh, 
finally, I wrote the book Rags to Riches, You Don't Have to Be Poor, and the book has literally gone around the world. Uh, I remember a very famous author, in fact, he's written several books, three of them have been made into movies, and uh, he read Rags to Riches when he first came out, and he called me and he said, Tom, you're a tremendous author, but he said, uh, you'll never make any money uh, writing <laughs> religious books, you know. Uh, people just don't buy them. He said, you need to write commercial books. And I said, well, whenever God tells me to, I'll start writing them. Well, it wasn't two weeks until I was in uh, Orlando, Florida, speaking at a men's advance, and uh, I'm sitting there, uh, uh, a guy that wrote, a very famous author, was a morning speaker. I was the afternoon speaker, but I was sitting next to his table and the minute he got through teaching, man, he run back and started selling books and tapes and everything. And I thought, well, maybe that's what I should do if I want to sell a lot of books. And God spoke to my heart and said, uh, well, do you want to sell a lot of books or do you want to pray for my people? Because I always pray for everybody at my meeting, lay hands mm -hmm. on them. Mm -hmm. That's the best part. And, uh, I said, well, Lord, you know I want to pray for your people. Well, before I got back to Tulsa, Oklahoma, prepaid legal and insurance company called me and purchased 20,000 copies wow. of the book. <laughs> and so I called the gentleman. I said, uh, uh, you think I'm going to make it? I told him about that. <laughs> I said, how many times have you sold 20,000? And then later on, Pat Robertson purchased 52,500 copies of wow. the book. So. Oral Roberts wrote me a two-page letter, says the most well-balanced, scripturally sound book he'd ever read on that subject. So, you know, I'm in the process right now of listening to the CDs. The CDs are word for word, mm -hmm. and I don't know why, but it seemed like I get a lot more listening to a book on, on CD than I do when I read it. And uh, I've just gone back to it. I've been listening to it for a couple of weeks in my car, and man, oh man, I, you forget, you know, yeah. what all you put in them, really. And uh, I told somebody the other day, I said, uh, there might be some CDs out there as good as those, but there's not any any better. Right. And, right. That's awesome to have that in a, in book form. And I think I think our ears, I think what. Our ears are so important. Mm -hmm. um, that when you were saying that, that reminded me of um, experiment that uh, Dr. Moto, mm -hmm. I believe his name. Have you ever heard of him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, he did an experiment with uh, ice crystals with water. He took ice crystals and uh, he took water and he talked to it and he said ugly, hateful words to it and then he froze it and he took uh, uh, ice crystals and looked under the microscope and they formed. Uh, w when he spoke ununiformed words, they formed uh, malformed and ununiformed, um, crystals. And so he took the water again, and he did an experiment, and he spoke to them uh, nice words, loving words, motivational words, and checked under the microscope, and they formed beautiful crystals, and they mm -hmm. took pictures of them. And then he did the same thing, and he wrote words on paper and taped it. Proverbs 18:21: death and life is in the power, power of the tongue. tongue. If right. Christians could comprehend how powerful the words are that they say, you know, uh, not long ago I was at a meeting and uh, I asked the people the question, you know, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? And man, I'm telling you, you talk about the answers you get. Well, you know, with God's help, you're not going to fail because Philippians 4, 13 says you can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth you. And, you know, the road to success is always under construction. So. You, you know that as well as I do, that there's always going to be detours, but if you hang in there, God will lead you and guide you and direct you in the way that you should go, and He tells us that throughout the Word of God. Right, and you know, you have inspired me, and what you just said inspires people, because if you, if you write it down, Oh yes. If you write down what you would do, and and I just did that recently mm -hmm. because I'm going to be doing a lecture right. to teenagers about mm -hmm. that. I said, well, wait a minute, I'm asking them these questions. I haven't even yeah. done that myself, and it made me really think. And uh, in two days, God already answered some yeah. of those things that I wrote oh, down. Amen. It's like he it was like he was waiting for me right. to believe him for it, mm -hmm. and I I believe that's the way 
how we're supposed to live, if, if we can do it ourselves, yeah. uh, he gets no credit. So when we step out, in the, like that quote that you had done on one of yeah. your other, earlier shows yeah, yeah. with Smith Wigglesworth, mm -hmm. if we step out on faith and take outrageous risks, yeah. like raising the dead or whatever, yeah. outrageous risks, God is delighted in that. Because it proves him. Oh, God, you know, God uh, wants us to set goals and plans. He said in Habakkuk 2, 2, and 3, write the vision, make it plain mm -hmm. upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. And then the third verse says, meditate on it, for it shall surely come to pass. Mm -hmm. I could have never accomplished what I've accomplished in life without goals and plans, because I quit school in 11th grade. Mm -hmm. I married my childhood sweetheart. And... When we got married, I didn't have a car, I didn't have a job, I had $80 in my billfold and I lost my billfold, and that's <laughs> where we started. But my wife and I was talking this weekend, would you ever thought that we would be where we are today, the nice home and the nice cars and everything, when we started out like we did? But she was raised in church like I was, and uh, uh, we both knew that with God all things yeah. are possible and when I was down she was up when she's down I was up and uh, so I got started then setting goals and plans well the first job I ever had after I was married was driving an ice truck in Fort Smith Arkansas found out she could starve to death in the winter time <laughs> trying to sell ice in Arkansas but I went back to school and and finished my education and I went from driving that ice truck in Fort Smith, Arkansas on to becoming chief accountant for American Airlines in New York City for five and a half years on to becoming the number one insurance agent in the nation out of over 14,000 agents for seven years in a row so you cannot tell me that goals and plans right. don't work right. uh, only three percent of the people in the world today has a written goal and plan. Wow. Ten percent has it up here. Mm -hmm. But as long as it's up here, it's nothing more than a dream. It won't right. become a reality till you write it out. Okay? It's a proven fact that the uh, ten percent accomplish fifty to a hundred percent more than the eighty seven percent that has no goal and plan for their life whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You can't argue with it. I mean, it's there. It's Jesus said, statistic. write the vision, make right. it plain. Right. Yeah. Words. Yeah. It, it comes down to life and death and the words that we speak uh, or write yeah. even. I, I wrote a little mini book because of people, you know, you people call in for prayer and you pray with them and then before you get off the phone, they abort their harvest. So I, I wrote a little mini book and it's a great seller on how to conquer the poverty giant. And giant number six, I think it is, tells you how to keep from aborting your harvest. The words of your mouth. Yeah. Speaking the words of your mouth. Yeah. And that, you know, the kingdom of God is all about words. It's about righteousness, peace, and joy. And, and, and uh, I know that you really like to teach a lot about uh, being rich and prosperous. Yeah. Um, that, but did you, well, I'm sure you knew, but... Um, in Matthew uh, 12, 18, it says that I will put my spirit upon him and he will declare justice to the Gentiles. And then in uh, Luke 4, 18, it says I, I'll put my spirit upon him and he'll preach the gospel to the poor. Mm -hmm. First thing it mentions is poor. So it is not uh, justice is us not being poor. Right. Justice, he already yeah. paid for it on the cross. Well, Jesus said the poor you'll have with you always, but that's not God's mandate for your right. life. Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans yes. to prosper you, right. to give you a hope and a future, not to harm you in any way, shape, or form. So, you know, ignorance will keep you in bondage. And, you know, oftentimes people, like, you get hate me off, sure. <laughs> no, I, uh, two I don't times, really know. 15 years, two times, <laughs> I got letters from friends who doesn't sign their name or their address. And you know what I do with them? I tear them up and throw them in the wastebasket. I don't read them. If they don't, <laughs> why would you read it? Right. You know? Well, I do a lot of stuff. I do a lot of ministry over the Internet. And I tell you, number two things, uh, speaking in the spirit and prosperity, are yeah. the, the, the most amount of hate. <laughs> haters you get for, for that area. But in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, it 
talks about how he was bruised and how he carried our sin and so forth, but it says that the chastisement of our peace, which peace means completeness, safety, soundness in body, welfare, health, prosperity, mm -hmm. peace, whole, entire covenant friendship, covenant relationship was upon him. Right. So he paid for us to prosper right there on the cross. Right. And he that's justice. Psalms 35, 27, he has pleasure in the prosperity right. of his people. He said in Deuteronomy 8, 18, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that gives you the ability to get well. How can you deny those things, you see? It's religious and traditional thinking. Yeah. Right. Godliness is next to being poor is next to godliness. And I, I can't even imagine where they come up with that because they go to work two, three jobs to make enough money to survive. Well, look at Third John. Beloved, I wish above all things yes, that, that you may prosper and be in health, health even right. as your soul prospers. Now, a lot of people will try to tell you, well, that's the soul, you know, and, and this and that and that. But I think First Corinthians 2 and 9, where it talks about Jesus being poor, well, you know, that was when he hung on the cross. I mean, when you look at the robe he wore and they gambled and for it and everything, right. it had to be an expensive robe. Right. So Jesus wasn't poor. And he had a house yeah. because he had two guests that spent came mm -hmm. and spent the night with yeah. him. Mm -hmm. And he, he fed all those people, right. you know. And if you look at the Abrahamic covenant uh, back there, uh, God prospered them right. because they came more and more and right. more prosperous yeah. and that we've been redeemed from the curse of the law so that the blessings of Abraham would come upon us yeah. and the blessings of Abraham, could, he could yeah. only be blessed physically right. with finances because he was not a spiritual man. Amen. So he couldn't receive spiritual prosperity. Right. It was financial, physical yeah. prosperity, cattle, uh, gold yeah. and all that. Yeah. Why don't you pray for the paper before we go off? Okay. Father, thank you for this time here. But Father, I pray for these people that have heard what we said. Father, I just ask that it would take root in their heart. That you would just, I just bind any religious or traditional spirits that keep them from receiving everything your blood paid for them to have. Father, just bless them if they don't know you, that they would just ask you to be their Lord and their Savior, and Father, that they would release everything to you and allow you to fill them up with everything that's in you, every health, uh, wholeness, prosperity, wisdom in everything, in every way, in Jesus' name, amen. I want to encourage you to get on your computer and order the book. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Uh, I've read the book. It's a tremendous book, uh, and just remember, yeah, we'll be back this same time, same time next week. Until then, remember, with God, you will succeed. Robin, the nice having you. Yeah. would like to thank you, the partners, for your generous financial gifts and prayers that keep this program on the air. Because of your support, thousands are hearing the good news and finding Jesus. If you'd like to become a partner or donate to this ministry, call 1-800-880-8220 or check out TomLetting.com. You can also mail your love gift to Tom Letting Ministries, 4412 South Harvard, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74135. God bless you.